Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video on uh, studying masters in TU Delft, Netherlands. In the last video, we discussed about uh, doing a masters in computer science, specifically in data science in TU Delft, Netherlands with Leonid. So if you want to know more about it, check the video in the info card. And in this video, we'll specifically focus on how you can apply for teaching assistant in Netherlands based on his experience. So moving on to the first question. So how do you apply for a teaching assistant? Uh, what are the requirements? Just highlight what is your experience? Yeah, so to apply for the teaching assistant, the first condition is you have to pass the course. Uh, they don't really check the grade points, uh, but if they have too many applications, then uh, it, it is possible that they, they will. But they don't care about the grade points uh, when you pass the course. But if it is a new course this year, like uh, previous year, the pattern recognition course got divided into two parts. So usually they look at your course that you have done in the last year, which is very close to the current course. So if it is a new course, then it, they look at the current, they look at the nearest or the closest uh, course. And if it is a repeating course every year, then they expect that you pass the course last year. Usually you email the professor or uh, most of the time it happens that uh, you are doing a master thesis in that lab. Uh, then you know the professor, you tell him that okay, I, I want to be a TA in this course, then uh, he keeps, uh, keeps you in his mind. But there is also a formal procedure which is via a portal, which I don't know much about it because I actually didn't apply it through that because I did the TA for uh, two courses. One was the deep learning and another one was the seminar computer vision by deep learning. So these both of the courses are offered by the computer vision lab, which is basically uh, my uh, master thesis research group. So the, that is how it did for me. And I did another TA, which was uh, the mentorship program uh, where you don't need to pass any course. I mean, you're always part of the master's program. So they usually look for the second year guys and you have to guide uh, uh, the new CAM students. Uh, for last year when I did it, it was mostly uh, physically on the campus, but this year it's more virtual. But you don't have to work more there and you get a good amount of money. So I think, yeah, so that that's my experience of TA. Okay. So yeah, talking about money, the next question is based on that. So what is the rough estimate salary that you can expect in dif these different types of teaching assistants uh, every month? Yeah, so I would say like the, the way I got. So for my uh, for the year when I did it, the master uh, mentorship program was a bit more paid. Uh, I got around uh, 700 euros for a five month contract. So that was a two, two quarter contract. So if I, if I talk about the, uh, the hourly rate, it was 14 point something, it's almost 15, because it's actually 15, they cut you some, uh, they deduct some of the taxes, which you actually get it return after when your contract ends. So it's actually 14.85 or something like that, but it's almost 15. That's the hourly rate. So it depends on the, what kind of contract or how many hours are there in the contract. Uh, so mentorship program was uh, 50 hours contract, but the other courses I did, there were two courses. So the deep learning course was of 50 hours and uh, the seminar computer vision course was 40 hours. But it is always possible if you work for more hours then the professor asks for you, which actually happened for our deep learning course, we had to, uh, we got almost 60 hours contract. Uh, in the end, it exceeded exceeded by 10 hours, but it depends on how many hours you work. So the the contract they give is the maximum hours. That is, you get 40 hours maximum or 50 hours maximum, and you need to claim those hours you have worked. So it's not that if they are giving 40 hours means they will they will always approve that. Uh, so it, you have to claim those hours, and but they mostly make a make a rough uh, calculation before offering you. So I would say just uh, like if they are offering 40 hours, then it almost reaches 39 or 38. Okay. So yeah, talking about the hours. So how did you uh, think about managing like if you are a TA and you in parallel, you need to balance maybe some coursework or maybe your thesis. So what was your experience about the balance 
like uh, was it easy or it was not you had some issues or what is your experience yeah so I, i i did the two courses one was the deep learning and the seminar computer vision deep learning course uh, was uh, more difficult because i had to handle five groups which is a lot because so technically i hit, i had to spend five hours at least uh, meeting them and the covid had already started so i had so the meetings used to take more time because when you ask for physical meet some of the groups avoid meeting you they don't come to labs but if they uh, in 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 case of virtual labs uh, they always make an appointment so uh, that that was a difficult task for me to because in the lab i had to spend only 2 hours but when it's a virtual meet i have to spend 1 hour for each group so 5 hours but they used to pay pay for that definitely so i think managing hours is easier when when you do a thesis because you are already on, only working on a single topic and also you need uh, some other work to do so it's easier to do while doing a thesis because uh, you get some distractions from that and so but if you are doing it while doing uh, already a coursework then it's a bit difficult to manage but it's definitely it's possible okay okay good to know so moving on to the final question uh, i think it is very subjective but still people ask it so i just want to know your experience uh, was it easy like uh, so is there any specific tips that you want to give to the upcoming master students who are applying for a ta uh, maybe you can give a idea like is it easy to get a ta or they need to take into account something they need to be sure in the first year of the master so that they can get a ta in the second year like what is your advice yeah so i would say if you're going for a ta while you are already having some courses left is uh, not a very wise decision uh, so always do the ta when you know that i have i have finished my courses because that's your first priority uh but i would say always go for a ta because you get benefits in not only the salary but you get some benefits uh, in terms of the of the insurance as well because you are already working here if you are doing a ta and you get a lot of money back i think the insurance almost becomes half so it's like 20 to 25 euros uh, it becomes 25 euro because now it is 55 i guess so 30 euro month is is a good, good amount of saving as a student okay okay thank you very much for giving your time and uh, in the next video we are going to discuss about part time jobs jobs and internships what you can expect in computer science data science in netherlands and in the upcoming videos we'll discuss about his master thesis and the living expenses so stay tuned for the upcoming videos till next video don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video subscribe to the channel if you have not yet share this video with each other and help each other out and thank you for your time uh, goodbye from netherlands <laughs>